Bingo, we're back. 10 o'clock rock on a Friday. Wow. Exciting show. Uh, we have HTA here in force. We have uh, George, <laughs> George Sagetti, and he's the chief executive of the Hawaii Tourism Authority. And we have um, Leslie Dance, who is the marketing director of Hawaii Tourism. What a, what a treat to have you here, guys. Thank, Thank you for you. coming down. Thank you very much for having us. It's yeah, an thanks. honor and privilege to be able to, to be here with you. Great. So um, we'll talk more about exactly what you guys do there, but the first order of business is to talk about the tourism conference that's coming up in September, late September. What's on, what's on in store for us? Well, in, on September 26th through the 30th, we are, we're going to have our annual Hawaii Tourism uh, uh, Conference, and we've really changed it up this year, Jay. We went from what was normally a one-day, kind of a day and a half of uh, a conference where it was very Oahu-centric, and we got up there and talked about the numbers, we're up, we're down. We decided through our travels these past 15 months that Hawaii is uniquely positioned to have a global tourism conference that would have people coming in from North America, it would have them coming in from Asia, and we could all collaborate and work together and see how we could uh, continue to build our business. Yeah, that's great. Um, this, this requires a new approach, though, doesn't it? I mean, you, the, the, we call this uh, you know, transformation of tourism. Um, what's the transformation, and what do you have to do to make the transformation? Well, uh, and, and I'm going to have Leslie speak, speak on some of the specifics, but we decided that we we're going to make it, instead of us coming and talking at you, we're going to come talk with you. And uh, we're going to, it's really going to be an opportunity for our local businesses to, for the first time really, be able to network with our global partners. For the first time, um, we have 50 people from coming from China. That's, that's new. That's not, not happened before. We have over and you're two. doing it in Mandarin, aren't you? You have an app. <laughs> yes, I, I, I work part. weeks on my Mandarin. <laughs> if you just ask me anything. And I'm, I, <laughs> but we're honored to have 50 people coming in from China. We have well over 200 from uh, Japan. It's really going to be a global mar um, a marketing program. So we'll have over, I think we'll have close to 60 tracks that we have set up for the week that will address everything from, from uh, technology to, to the, some of the new... Uh, innovation that the team is, you know, I really encourage them, challenge them to ideate new innovation because uh, the, war, the it's changing. Yeah. It's changing by the minute. Yeah, and you've got to be with it. Yes. It's so good that you are. You know, the thing about, um, you know, about going global like this, it requires another approach in marketing, doesn't it? The product becomes different. The yes. approach becomes different. The outreach is different. Now. Yes, we want to we wanna be able to see, show the world that we're leading in tourism, that we've got the most innovative ideas and and respect and um, I think that this is going to continue to grow and we do have the, about 60 tracks and then we have sessions within those tracks we talk about culinary tourism we talk about sports marketing we talk about we're going to launch our new website as well as some virtual reality stuff mm -hmm. so and each day is tied to a pillar of our strategic plan so there's a rhyme and reason to everything we're doing it's different, though. I mean, it seems to me uh, that from the time mm, I started following this, which was right after the convention center was built, when well, middle 90s, uh, um, it's gone more global in recent years. I think one important demarcation was APEC, because APEC was big. Um, there were governments involved. There was a lot of people coming from with high expectations, and the culture. Uh, at least the tourism, uh, the convention side, seemed to be changing then. And then we have uh, we have others too, but we had the World Conservation Congress last week and this week, and also building a culture of attracting people from far away right. and having them really have a good time, having them stimulated in the intellectual process. Um, this is a real challenge. It's a lot different than a smaller national or local kind of conference, and you have to build a new culture around the way you do that. You know? Yeah, and, and that's it's really in line with what we're trying to do, Jay. Uh, I mean, uh, if I could just step back, leisure has always kind of been our our key. Yes. Leisure, and then number two is romance, and they're both you know those <laughs> things that we just continue to talk about, and and those are the guys, the uh, the baby boomers, and all that come back five, ten, fifteen, twenty years. Um, they've put us here, and we, we want to protect that, but we have to ideate new innovation that's going to be prepared for the future. And so, um, you know, going after millennials and going after that MCI business, like you, the, this recent uh, conference we had, at, uh, it's still going on, and it, it, tomorrow's the final. It just shows that Hawaii can truly stage a world-class, serious world-class event and at the same time, those 10,000 participants that came here for IUCN can enjoy themselves when they're not at the conference. It's the best of both worlds. Yeah. So the MCI business is very important to us 
internationally as well, the, the meetings conventions incentives okay. and these meetings like the IUCN like APEC and uh, many others that we're bringing to the convention center are extremely important it's important to our our lodging partners um, it's very important to them for their segment of business as well. Yeah, let's talk about tourism in general for a minute. It seems to me these large conferences have a, a, a number of effects. It's not just that they bring in people for that conference, but they make a statement about mm -hmm. Hawaii. Uh, we, we become matured in the process. We become a, uh, I must be talking your language now. Must be. <laughs> marketing we, speak. We, yeah, <laughs> marketing speak. We, you know, we have a brand that appeals to more right. people yes. because we have these, these conferences going on. And even if the people coming have nothing to do with the conference, still somehow the existence of the conference, the, the fact that we can pull it off really well, uh, changes our appeal to other groups. No? A lot of our speakers are coming early or staying late too because they want to enjoy the islands. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what does tourism look like these days, George? Well, tourism is changing, as I mentioned, uh, by, by the minute. I mean, if you look at the, 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 the visitor industry worldwide, it's become much more global. You see what technology is kind of thrown into it, and I would just use a couple examples. If you see, if you look at what Airbnb and HomeAway and uh, alternative accommodations have have put in there, it's a, it's based on technology. It's a platform. That's all it is. It's just worth what eighty billion dollars, and they don't own a hotel room. It's a platform that's based on demand. So same thing with Uber. If you look at Uber, what it's done to transportation, yep. again, it, it, it's a it's technology, uh, and it's a, and they're worth sixty nine billion. They don't own a car. So it, it's, but it's based on demand. People want these things. So our challenge is how do we incorporate those business models, technology, and everything coming at us with our current model, making sure that it's a le the level, the, the playing field is level, making sure that the uh, regulations are in place to make sure that everything, you know, the health and safety and welfare of visitors using these is, is there. So those are, those are your challenges, and if we don't address those, as well as address what are the needs of the millennials? What, are they going to come here 15 years in a row? Probably not. They like to come here, and what they like, what we're, we're hearing, is they want authenticity. They want to come somewhere off where, the beaten path. Off the beaten path. They go on their 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 smartphone. They go, where do the locals eat? Where do the locals hike? Where do the locals yeah, this swim? This is good, isn't it? Yeah, it, yeah. it, it just brings good. them out into the community. Yes. Right. Because if you look at our pillars of strength, and it's it's um, it's interesting. I tell I tell my team because other people have asked me numerous times if I don't care it's from Jeju Island or it's China. They go, George, how do you guys do it? You've had you want five years of record growth. How do you guys do it? We're kind of like the benchmark of of tourism. We really are. People look at us as how how do they get there? And so we don't divulge all our secrets. <laughs> but well, nobody's watching. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure they won't get it from this show. We won't. But it, I would tell you that the, the pillars that we really stand are embedded in everything we do is the Hawaiian culture. Uh, it's, it's something that we obviously, uh, it's important to us. We not only do we recognize, but it's important that we, we perpetuate it. It's embedded in everything we do, the aloha spirit, the Hawaiian culture. Um, and then the other thing is our natural resources. We, we think it's real important that we find the balance between our visitor industry and the respect of our local residents and, the, and our natural they resources. They are a natural resource. The they local are a natural resource. Natural they resource. they yeah. are. They're we ambassadors. Cannot, we can't yeah. do this without them. And yeah, yeah. we don't lose sight of that. And that's not saying and it's not without its challenges. Yeah. Um, so that's real important, and it's kind of uh, uh, also embedded in our, in our strategic plan. In fact, number one is protecting our natural resources. Our oceans need to be clean, our, uh, protect our coral reefs, um, you know, uh, our rainforests on Maui and all the islands. Are, it's important. I love with the DLNR, we help fund um, a cleanup uh, along the Nepali coast to clean up the, Mali, uh, the Nepali coast to get it back to its original, you know, um, because we've got to present an image of Hawaii as, as being what, what people romantically, you know, remember it to be, namely clean and beautiful and romantic and yeah. all that. I but, applaud the DLNR for what they did out there. It was yeah. fantastic. Yeah. So how do you actually get the word out? You know, there's, first of all, there's a lot of things happening here, and we, we can talk about the news. If you open the paper any day, the news is likely to have an impact on tourism. Mm -hmm. And we should all be aware of that. You know, we're mm -hmm. not playing only to ourselves. We're playing to the world. We're playing to our most important industry. But how do you convey that message when you go out? What's the way you reach the world? Well, we have a great global marketing team based in every market that we are attracting visitors from. So there are on the ground eyes and ears, and we feed information to them. And we look at platforms that can benefit multiple areas, like Australia, um, Japan, Korea, uh, China, Hong Kong. 
Southeast Asia. So we have, you know, really good people in really good places mm -hmm. that help us spread the word. Yeah, and sorry, George. Uh, yeah, and I, if I might add, just locally, one of our missions in, in going from an 800 person conference is to go to a 2,500 and hopefully three and then five, make it a global conference. That was part of the mission, putting heads to the beds, bringing people here to experience Hawaii, is kind of widening our scope of influence for the first time we're going to have. It's always been very traditional, uh, kind of brick and mortar, which is very important. It's, it's, it's our foundation. But as these new technologies come in the market and all of a sudden you have alternative comments, Accommodations. You have timeshares. You have you know uh, the traditional B and Bs um, that we're getting people like um, Foodlands and ABCs involved and having voice in our industry and now widening the scope of of influence because uh, the visitor industry impacts them. It impacts not only the two hundred thousand that we employ. It impacts thousands, hundreds of thousands below them that benefit by the, vis the, the 8.6 million visitors that come here. Yeah. And we'll have it, we have a village square which is central um, in the convention center and there's lots of booths with people like George was speaking about. This is for the conference. For the conference September. itself, yeah. yeah. And, they, um, and we also have a tech hub where you can go experience the virtual reality and the new website and then we'll have a social media room where people can sit and blog and do whatever they'd like to do. Um, and we have a stage in the round. So it's going to be a real hub of activity for a lot, everybody. A lot of people working on software, you know, to support the tourism industry because we know more about it mm -hmm. than really any other place. You know, the hotel operations, your operation, the, the numbers involved, it, it begs for software, mm -hmm. you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, um, I, I, something you alluded to a minute ago, it's a, it's a multiple direction street. Whoops, we have a slide. This is the app. Let's yes. just, this is the app, and I, I saw this in the materials prepared for the uh -huh. show, and I'm fascinated with the app. So while it's on the screen, can you tell us about the app? Well, the app is um, designed for people attending the conference. So as soon as they register, they get an opportunity to download the app. They'll be able to use it from the audience for audience participation. They'll be able to check their schedules where they want. You can communicate between each other at the conference itself. So it's a really good collaboration tool. Yeah, as well. And we, we set the standard by doing yeah. that. Yeah, you know, yeah. I was built that. Uh, and I and I think the um, you know the thing about the conference you're doing in late September, it's more than just the professional conference. It's oh. much more than that. The leverage is obvious and huge. So a travel agent comes from Petaluma, California. It's not that she's going to learn more about the industry or see the exhibits or rub shoulders and all that, she's going to go back to Petaluma, California, and she's going to pedal Hawaii. Right, exactly. <laughs> right, exactly right. Huge, huge leverage that way. Yeah. So. I mean, and when you look at it, uh, and that's really, really important that we continue to brand Hawaii, and, 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 um, and again, f with the, the Hawaiian culture, the Aloha spirit, the welcoming spirit, it's a safe, clean, welcoming uh, environment. Hawaii is in demand right now, and so um, getting that awareness uh, is extremely important important to us and as Leslie had alluded to this conference is going to be so different that every island is going to be able to come over and showcase its own unique experience and activities and farm to table we've not done that before it's been very Oahu centric and now um, you know, Maui, Kauai, uh, the, they all have a lot of their own. Yeah they're all in the village square they're, the they're going to square. anchor it so yeah. that's going to be something completely new. So when we come back from this break, I'd like to talk about the effect of the international market, the new international marketplace, and some of the other, you know, uh, brick and mortar projects mm -hmm. uh, in Waikiki and outside of Waikiki, and, and how they affect uh, not only tourism but the secondary effects of tourism, like yeah. buying condos, that yeah. kind of thing. So when we come back, I want to talk about uh, you know how you flow all this out, you know, into the economy. Okay, we'll okay. be right back. Uh, uh, that's uh, George Segetti and Leslie Dance from HDA. Aloha, I'm Kawi Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland every Friday here on Think Tech Hawaii. I also have a blog of the same name at kawilucas.com where you can see all of my past shows. Join me this Friday and every Friday at 3 p.m. Aloha. Hello, and I'm Patrick Bratton. Please join me for Global Connections every Thursday at 1 p.m., where we talk with a variety of guests about various international uh, issues, historical issues, both here in Hawaii and abroad, range from security, human rights, ethics, and all sorts of other things. So please join me. I look forward to talking with you and seeing some of my guests. 
Aloha everyone, I'm Maria Mera and I'm here to invite you to my bilingual show Viva Hawaii on ThinkTech Hawaii every other Monday at 3 p.m. We are here to talk about news, issues and events local and around the world. Join me. Aloha. Okay, we're back. We're live with George Segetti and Leslie Dance of Hawaii Tourism Authority talking about tourism, talking about this big conference they're doing it in September, and, and I'm trying to keep current on how they're doing and how they see us and how we see them and the world, how they, they all see us. Okay, so you were talking in the break about technology and the huge effect it has um, to show people that we are aware, we are current, uh, we are cooking here. Right. Uh, and this is a great statement to make. We can't afford to do it any other way. No. Well, our virtual reality, um, which I'm very, very excited about, is going to be, you're going to start like in a Google Earth view, and then you're going to go on a hang glider down in the clouds. You're going to hear the wind, and there's going to be some music, and then you choose the island you want to land on. <laughs> and then you'll be welcomed by a host from that island, yeah. and you'll have a different experience on each island. Yeah. So it's really exciting. So the other thing we were talking about in the break, which I think is worth discussing here in the second part of our show, is, uh, you know, dealing with... The community and that means dealing with the legislature it, de it means dealing with the public and, and reminding them because people forget you know you are the engine of our economy um, you guys are so important you know to the future at, well in the current you know economy in every way in our state people forget that it's all so much of it is derived from tourism mm -hmm. how do you do that how do you make sure that the ledge the square building you know remembers this every day and every session well, um, it's extremely important. I think part of our mission at the Tourism Authority is really to continue to give good information and to educate and be, be a very open, transparent, very commu you know, open communication. And so this year, we're inviting all 76 of our legislators to come down and as well as our county council statewide to come down because they're key to it. I mean, they, they, we, we need them every step of the way and they've been very, very supportive. Um, but I also want them to see the many stakeholders and, and really the challenges that we have that we're being attacked from so many big global, I mean, from countries coming after our business. And none of this happens, none of these successes of these past five years happen by accident. It takes really a team. Um, while we may be the tip of the spear, it's real important that we have our lodging, we have our access, we have our, our, our uh, transportation all on board talking and collaborating together. So I'm asking the legislators to please come down join us come 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 network with uh with these hard-working people and these businesses uh it's our economic engine and come see what we do and uh and vice versa we'll just thank them for all that they do in supporting uh, sure. supporting the tourism authority uh getting to the community uh, that's very very important because as the price of this as, as the experience rises which it has everything has to be shipped in here and so f everything has kind of gone up uh, but as that all goes up, it's important that the experience that we have for these visitors goes up with it. So we do support a lot of community events, a lot of festivals, a lot of things that will, the visitor will come here and they'll go, wow, this, this yeah. Honolulu Festival is amazing. Because you want that to happen. You right. want that to continue. Yes. You want people to know that there's someone out there, you know, including from far away, that mm -hmm. cares about their cultural activities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So. Enhance the visitor experience. Enhance the visitor yeah. experience. Yeah. Because yeah. I tell people it'd be one thing if we had an Eiffel Tower that they can come to every year, <laughs> or they had the Golden Gate Bridge, or they had, you know, the, the, the Vatican. Can, we don't have any of that. We have to find other ways to get people yeah. here to come here time and time again, year after year, and that's our secret. That's what we work on. That's our yeah. idea of the new innovation. Make people welcome. Make sure the experiences are all there. Make sure the resources are protected and finding that balance. And uh, so that's our challenge. You refer to challenges, uh, I mean, a couple of times. And I, I need to ask you, you know, what are the challenges? What do you worry about? I mentioned that everything in the newspaper somehow impacts tourism. Uh, it impacts you, uh, mm -hmm. in, you know, in your effort to make tourism better and better. Um, what are the things that bother you? I mean, there are things out there that are troublesome to the local population. Are they troublesome to you too? Yeah, they they really are. I'm a, I'm from the private sector. I'm a businessman. I'm not uh, I'm not from the, the hotel side or the political side. So the things that worry me are, are just not, making sure we don't get complacent. You know, I've always had the philosophy that when th times are at its best, even when I ran private sector business, is when you need to challenge your team to manage at its best. 
because mm -hmm. when it goes down, it's too late. Now you're just putting yeah. out fires. So yeah. uh, there's just complacency, making sure people aren't comfortable. That, uh, you know, people come no matter what, because that's not really the case. Uh, there are other things. There's world events going on that are out of our control. And if you look at what's going on in Europe. And, far away, far yeah, away. That, that, that we can't do anything We can't do anything about, about, but will that... Will that resonate with visitors that are thinking about traveling, maybe putting their hands in their pocket, and maybe this year, oh, we're not going to go out yeah, this year? Yeah, Those yeah. kind of things we can't control, but yeah, for us yeah. not to at least look at them and say, we need uh, to, you know, you've, you've got world events, you've got economic events, you've got, I mean, even mosquito Climate change mos and weather events. You know? Exactly. Mosquito-borne uh, diseases. I'm, I'm, I applaud the governor and the Department of Health, what they're doing on Fight the Bite. Uh, I think it's very important that we educate and we message to our local uh, t uh, our residents that there's things that we can do to control that yeah. uh, and uh, but they know it's a game changer is things like Zika so we're, we're always watching that and we again applaud the governor and uh, Department of Health we've been very active and in fact we're flying out to Maui on uh, Monday to address 200 people and that's one of our things is to talk about what we can do to to address fight the bite and be a part of it yeah. so things like that we look at I don't lose sleep over it because I think my team is really um, we're, we're always thinking ahead we want to yeah. be ahead of this thing so. yeah. to do that I mean it's just, you know because tourism and for that matter the brand of tourism is 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 delicate fragile right. it's fragile in some ways yeah. and it could change overnight and who knows why and as you say you can't control some things mm -hmm. so we have to be watching it all the time absolutely you Jay and, and that's one reason we're kind of trying to expand our voice when when I go see someone uh, like a Paul Casasa ABC's or uh, Janai Wallace freelance who have been are going to be coming to our conference for the first time as well as other retailers uh, ask them where would you be without the 8.6 million visitors coming here and the 15.2 billion they spend in our economy where would we be as a business if we had to rely on only uh, the 1.3 residents and all of us are uh, all of us benefit by this this visitor industry yeah so what will the international market the new international marketplace have uh, as an effect you know I mean my generation we used to go to Waikiki it was like our backyard it was like our neighbor uh, but you know with big hotels and the prices change and the traffic congestion to get in there and all that harder movie theaters went away and now it's not so often except for like you know like weddings <laughs> and and you know anniversaries and neat meals and good restaurants and all that. but um, how can you bring the community into Waikiki uh, is the international marketplace something that will do that are there other projects like that I, um, you know, I, I kind of we sat on the sidelines and watched the the, the back and forth on that, and you know, both sides keep it uh, the way it was, and then other ones. Uh, in fact, I talked, I spoke to someone the other day that was very opposed to it, and then when they went into it, this uh, opening, they said, you know what, they changed my mind. This really is nice, and that we have to continually look to to revitalize our product to keep up with the times. And as much as you want to keep, you know, I I just did an ad address to Hilo, and I told Hilo, I said, keep Hilo, Hilo. You know? That's a very good point. You know? Keep yeah. Hilo Hilo because we need that authenticity. We yeah. need that Hawaii. Whatever uh, it is, Hawaii. It is yeah. But in Waikiki, that's a, that's a different uh, visitor that wants to come in. They want, they want that, uh, that, that shopping experience and that, you know, then, uh, so I, I think what we see with the Ritz Carlton coming, uh, going up, I think is kind of revitalizing that uh, Kohio in that side, which needs it. Um, and, and, uh, and then even the Four Seasons out at Hualalai, I think that's going to be a plus because when we were in China, the one thing I did hear is that, oh, we, 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 we don't know enough about you, but we understand you don't have any five-star hotels. And I, I said, no, we do. We have, <laughs> we, have, we have it all. We have the whole gamut from, people, from popular price uh, to, to mid-range to y you can go, you know, Lanai for Four Seasons to Hualai Four Seasons or any of our top five-star five hotels. So let's talk about the future for a minute. Uh, where is it going? You know, throw everything in the pot, all the, the vectors and factors and influences and possibilities. Where is tourism, where is HDA going in the next five or ten years? What do you see? Continued growth, continued infrastructure, um, uh, problems that will level it, uh, problems that will put it at risk. Uh, how do you feel it's going to go? You really want an answer for that one? <laughs> you're good, Jay. We got to manage the growth. Though. Yeah, you're, you're really good. Uh, I, I wouldn't be sitting here if I didn't think w uh, this team could do a really good job, and that was part of my thing coming in assessing. Uh, part of my challenge coming in assessing all the internal process and looking at long term, short term, and long term. And 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 so these 15 months we've been doing that, putting together a really good team. That's that's really. Uh, um, uh, innovation is top of mind for them, uh, making a difference top of mind with them. Um, we're trying to find that balance. We don't think, people always ask me, what's the capacity number? And that's something that we don't really talk about. 
could I open the, could we open the floodgates to China and have 10 million visitors come in here? Would that be compatible with our natural resources? Probably not. Good question. Yeah. So yeah. we try to really find the balance. We look at spend. We look at, a, a, we look at, like I said, the MCI business that will bring meetings and conventions because they spend. Um, so it's really important that we find that balance. I even talk to lodging teams and I say, and I'll talk to them and say, George, we don't have to have a record year. We just need to know we're going to be kind of where we are because yeah. I think they're real happy with, with the, the, the past. I mean, 2016 was not supposed to be a really good year for us. And 2016 is panning out to be a pretty good year. And Locking 17, look at knock on wood. <laughs> not, you know, I'm going to always accentuate the, the positives, right? I'm, uh, that's, a, that's my uh, personality is to always kind of look at the, 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 the glass half full. And I think um, the long-term thing is we've just got to make sure that we keep in mind, keep that balance and make sure that we always have that, that we have our residents as partners, we have access to, par I mean, it's really important that all, all the tr um, uh, trade partners are in this thing together. We're all paddling mm -hmm. the canoe together. And we also have to look at make encourage travel to the neighbor islands. Yes, That's I was important. going to ask you yeah. about the neighbor islands is so different now than Oahu. Mm -hmm. uh, they're like a different community altogether. You said you got to keep Hilo Hilo. Yes, it's so important because it, it offers uh, refreshing difference mm -hmm. and cultural depth. Mm -hmm. um, so we need to do that, and I think it's a great marketing piece to mm -hmm. say, don't stop in Oahu. There's so yeah. much more to see. Mm -hmm. A lot of people do stop in Oahu. They yeah, do. They kind do. of get them out to the neighbor islands. So neighbor island access is one of, one of the things that we continue to talk about and it's, uh, it's challenging right now. But uh, neighbor island access is everywhere we travel between China, Japan, and wherever we go, they go, how do we get to the neighbor islands? Because each island will have its own unique experience all the way from the lava flow and into the ocean to the big island to yeah. the Jurassic, Jurassic Park coastline of the Nepali coast yeah. to the rainforest of Maui. They all have unique uh, and exciting and memory-making experiences that we know that people will come back one year for Oahu, maybe one year for Maui, maybe one year for Kauai. So there's, that's kind of in our plan. We is, need to reinforce that and encourage yeah, absolutely. that. absolutely. Do you yeah. market each neighbor island separately? Do you try to give each one a persona? They, yes, we do. Each one has a different personality. Um, and, we, and we talk about that in all of our marketing materials and how we message things. that We bring out that unique personality of each island. So they all have their own you know, points. Yes, they and all so have So you don't favor one over the other, <laughs> no. of course. But they're all our children. You're trying to sell yeah. separate personalities. <laughs> they're all our children. Yes, they're all part of one big family. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, HDA is much more than a trade association or a government agency, you know, because they, you are the center of our economy, and that's the way it is. That's the total reality. Nobody can argue that. And, and you affect so many other aspects of our lives and our economy. And so it, it puts a, bit, a burden on you, for sure. You have a kind of fiduciary burden because you are the center. But then the other thing, and this is the more important thing, is that you are us. We are you. We are together in this. As you go, when I say as General Motors goes, so go, you know, uh -huh. as you go, so do we go. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the message, really, at this conference. That's why we're trying to get 2,500 people there, maybe 3,000, because it is. Yeah. Our success is their success. Their success is ours. It's a team effort. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it takes a team to live the dream, right? Yeah. And I just want to get more stakeholders and more voice, networking and, you know, working together and meeting one another. And that's what this conference is about. This isn't about us sitting up there for a day and a half saying, you know, Korea's up percent, uh, this percent, you know, that's not what, you can go on our website and get that. We want this to be much more interactive. George, take, take a look at that camera, right? The, the, the one in the middle there, it should have a red on it. Okay, and tell, tell the young people, tell the millennials here in Hawaii why they should consider joining the tourism industry, becoming part of this, what the opportunities are for them. Well, I would tell you because the millennials now and everyone recognizes now I'll surpass the baby boomers uh, in population. The millennials are everyone's target. Uh, the, million, the millennials for us are extremely important because Hawaii, I, I, what's with, I, what I see with the millennials is they want to go to places that look at their resources, protect their resources, um, and, and they're willing to spend more to, to destinations that do respect their, their resources and put the, the appropriate whatever it takes to make sure that they're protecting it. So um, 
I would ask the millennials to come over here, experience Hawaii, the unique, every island has its own unique experience. We'll have the technology that they need to be interested in. They can go on their smartphone, they can go see where the locals eat, they can go see where the locals hike, they can see where the locals swim and dive, and I think that's what's uh, attractive to the millennials. They don't want, they, they're, they're not tourists. They're not tourists. They want to make their own postcards. They want to make, uh, they want to write their own <laughs> agenda, and that's what we offer in Hawaii. <laughs> And also the millennials that live here, to, this is our home, right? And so, you know, let's promote our home together. Yeah. And I think that's, the tourism industry is a big industry here in Hawaii. People should respect it and want to work in there. So. Thank you. That's uh, Leslie Dance, Marketing <laughs> Director, uh, and also George Segetti, the CEO of uh, Hawaii Tourism Authority. We are honored to have you. We have, Thank this has been Jay. a delightful Thanks, conversation. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, guys. See you. The 20th the convention, convention center. Yes. <laughs> yes.